one too many sermons this week. I have a friend from the time when I was just at a seminary. He, we were part of a study group, and one of his favorite sayings at this time of the year was, you can't get to the resurrection without going past the cross. It's just not possible. It was his way of suggesting that we should not jump immediately into the joy without recognizing the realities of the day. Easter's a time for us to all gather, and we gather with all the joy that we can muster, with the flowers that decorate every part of the church, with all the things that we can do to celebrate. But sometimes our celebrations turn out to be an escape from the realities of our world and from the brokenness of our lives. It turns out to be a time to get away from it all rather than a time for us to face the darkness and to discover that in the darkness, right there in that moment before the sun comes up, is Jesus. It's a story that requires courage. It's a story that requires facing the darkness. And in this story, the character who demonstrates the courage is Mary. Not once, not even twice, I suggest to you, but at least three times, at least three different times in this story. You see, while it was still dark, as Rita said in her children's chat, Mary went out to the tomb. And when I read those words sometimes, I think of all the horror flicks I've ever seen in which there comes a point in the movie when they take you into that dark, scary cemetery. And with all that had unfolded just three days before, I can't imagine what was going through Mary's mind as she chose before the sun came up while it was still dark to go to the tomb by herself. That's courage. To face the challenges of loss, to face the realities of what has come over the last few days. Off she goes. Only when she gets there to the tomb, before she even gets up to the tomb, she can see that the stone is rolled away. And I'll tell you what, if I was in a in a cemetery in the dark and the stone was rolled away, I'd have gone home too. And around she goes. She goes back and she gets recruits. She goes to Peter and the disciple whom Jesus loved. We never get his name. And she says, they've, they've taken away my Lord. I don't know where they put him. The stone is rolled away. And those two men, they go off running, racing, one going past the other, and they get to the tomb. They look around. We are told that when they look around, they believe. But we're not sure what they believe, for it says, for as yet they did not know the scripture that he must be raised from the dead, which leaves me with questions about exactly what it was they believed, but they believed. And then they go home. Now, Mary must have followed them, and here comes time two for me, the second time when Mary is brave, because she must have followed them, and she's now in the cemetery again, and she is there by herself, and this time because she knows it's safe, so to speak, she stays, and she weeps, and she weeps. And she weeps, facing all the losses, 
the loss of someone she loved, the loss of someone who had forgiven her, the loss of someone who had accepted her for all that she was, the loss of a dream for a better world and a better place, the loss of love. She could have gone home with the others, but she stayed to weep and to mourn. And that takes courage. In our day, the solution for that often is when we feel the pain too much, too great. I've seen it. They give us a pill. Tell us to move on. But Mary stays there to face the darkness and the brokenness and the challenge. And it is there as she stays that the third time of her courage rises for me because as she stoops over to look into the tomb, she sees two angels. And the two angels ask her, why are you weeping? And Mary puts it out there. She confronts them. She expresses her grief. Why are you weeping? It's a question that is focused on in a sermon that Rita shared with me from Shannon Johnson Kirshner. Why do we weep? We weep for all of the brokenness in our world, for all of the things that have gone wrong, for death that comes, for the loss of loved ones, for broken relationships, for the terror that is so much a part of our lives, for anniversaries of violence, and for violence that continues in our own day. For hatred, and division, and separation, and fear, and brokenness, we weep. And when Mary is asked, why are you weeping, she is courageous. She is courageous enough to say to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. And then she turns and sees another, and she goes to that one, thinking that one is a gardener, and says, they have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they've put him. Would you please tell me where they put him? And I'll take care of him. She didn't know it was Jesus. But there, in the darkness, in the garden, God meets her in Jesus, the resurrected one, and utters her name. And that's all it takes for her to know who it is. That's all it takes. And in that moment, in that moment, her life has changed again. Her grief is changed and transformed into a mission and a message. Jesus says to her, go and tell. Go and tell the others all that you have seen. Go and tell them that I am raised. Go and tell them that death cannot defeat the power of God's love. Go and tell them that love overcomes hatred. Go and tell them that the brokenness is healed by the power of God. Go and tell them that all the world, all the world is touched by the risen Savior, the darkness and the light, the good and the bad, that nothing, nothing can defeat the power of God in the world. 
And so we have joy. We have joy because our Lord is risen. Let us celebrate. Let's pray. Loving God, come to us in the risen Christ. Transform all that hurts and breaks us and make us whole. Transform our grief into joy. In Jesus' name, amen.